Welcome everyone. It is Sunday, um, August 6, 2023, the first Sunday in August. I am uh, Robin, the co-host, and we have had Robin, the guest speaker today. And it's been a wonderful day uh, on the Morgellons call, and this is, we're entering into the Q&A section of our call. Richard, you're muted. Okay, let's get rolling. Since we may discuss uh, technical information, I may make recommendations. I'd like to let everyone know that before you start the diet, the King diet, or accept any of our recommendations, you, you are to discuss them with your medical doctor to make sure they do not interfere with any health problems you're presently experiencing. The AMA wants us to let you know that we are not licensed physicians. We have not passed the rigorous testing, and only licensed physicians can diagnose, treat, cure, or mitigate any disease, and we're not here to do that. I am here to educate, educate you how to use the diet to your benefit, how to clean the organisms out of your skin, how to get them out of your environment, and how to build health and immune functioning through targeted supplements. Okay, who's the first question that we have? Hi, friend. Um just like Robin, you know, and um, our other Robin got trouble a little bit with her cat too, but I got uh, the um, Morgellons uh, from, and my from outdoor cats that were mine, and my house was totally infected, and myself after I got an accidental scratch from one of them, remember, and um, I didn't know what was happening, so my whole house, I've had to just take a section at a time like like Robin too, and <laughs> you have flare-ups. But what I wanted to ask her was um, on the, um, because I've had a lot of gut issues because I had several surgeries going on um, after I got the bacteria, you know, the Morgellons and the mites and um, all the antibiotics, uh, I think is why I haven't gotten my weight quite back up and still have a little bit so should I never have done a questionnaire with you um, I have sent a thing about one to you but maybe we should do that together I should do that with you um, I was going to ask her how, what is the is it chiosis that you're talking about four times a day and yeah. what does that okay well it, it, and there are several enzymes in the store. The chitinase, or however it's pronounced, is a specific enzyme for fungal issues, primarily, and biofilm. So if, if uh, you have a fungal problem, it uh, basically chews up chitin. And chitin can exist in the eggs of mites. It can exist in the mouth parts of mites. And it can exist, okay. in, it can exist, exist in fungal organisms. It is also okay. benef it is also beneficial for biofilm. It breaks up biofilm. So when we're dealing with things like Lyme disease, Lyme disease, the spirochete morphs into colonies, and they're protected by a biofilm it creates. So it breaks down biofilm that is uh, uh, created by any kind of organism that we don't want in our bodies. Okay. You think I ought to give that a try? Because I do have, you know, both of those situations. And well, I have a whole yeah. lot. Yeah, no. you know, I, I highly recommend it. It's a very, you know, very powerful enzyme. We've had uh, Anna talk about how she uses it, and Robin just talked about how beneficial it's been for her. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I think I'll give it a try. It, so it's an enzyme. Right. Okay, so, so if you go, um, if you, if you and, go and to, it's like little uh, tablets, and you take it without food, and you take it down yes, to three to four times a day. They're capsules, and you take them uh, uh, as directed. Uh, you know, it could start with one or two a day, and Robin is going up okay. to four a day. Okay, so if you go okay. into the, if you go if you go into the store and you go up to the top right, there's a search bar. All you have to do is type in enzyme. E N Z Y M E, okay. and then okay. click, click on the search thing, the little magnifying glass, 
and all the enzymes in the store will come up, and then you can uh, select it from there. Okay. Okay. And, um, and I wanted to share, I did not realize, and a lot of people may not know, that, that they could do the sea salt that is iodized. I was so glad I asked you about that because I am feeling a whole lot better since um, using the iodized sea salt. Great. So you just have to read the label to make yeah. sure it's no always, good. Always read labels. Yes, absolutely. What Thank about, you. Um, I know Robin does um, use a salsa de yolk. Do you just have to read the ingredients to make sure the sugar and the vinegar is weighed down on it, or is there a salsa without any? Does anybody know? Uh, what's the question? I didn't quite follow you. Um, like a salsa, you know, I'm a looking salsa. for something oh. like salsa. So, to get, oh, yeah, that we can get the uh, spelt crackers in and things like that. I, you just make your own salsa. Uh, come up, you. Just make it with your tomatoes and like yeah, make it with tomatoes. Yeah, make it with uh, yeah, spicy tomato, uh, spicy uh, uh, peppers, and sure, make your own salsa. You're very creative. You come up with uh, some great recipes. I am, recipes. And, just, okay. uh, and, and I do just a little bit of sour cream um, because I can't do much dairy. But uh, okay, I just wanted to ask that. And since I'm going to be moving in the next seven or eight months, um, the new Vaughn strip. I'm going to put in, um, is that okay? You or Robin know? I know Robin said that the um, menthol crystals I do buy from you with each paper thing. So anybody that has paper thing, don't put it in your important papers. <laughs> so, so is that okay to put in pictures? Or do, should I just stick with the new bond strip to put in the bagging with uh, my nice pictures and things that I'm cleaning down with all the um, stuff before I move. Now, are you talking like a whole bunch of pictures, like, or are you talking about pictures and frames? I'm talking about pictures and frames that are very expensive, and yeah. I, I I was going to clean them down real good with the, um, you know, your Amazon stuff, and then when I wrap them, put the, the new Vaughn strips in there with them, yeah, what do you suggest, Robin? New Vaughn strips or uh strips are, are designed for expensive pictures and artwork. Do not use menthol crystals. <coughs> okay, great, thank you. All right. Do not use what? Do not use menthol crystals. Okay. D use okay. New Vaughn gotcha. strips. Okay, thank you. All right, who's next, Chris? Okay. Anthony. Anthony. Hi, Hi Anthony. Yes. How are you doing, Richard? Thank you for okay. taking my call. Sure thing. I'm glad to have you. I've been listening. Uh, uh, thank you. I'm glad to have found you, my God. Um, I am uh, I just I just received a copy of the book uh, Friday, and uh, I've made an uh, extensive grocery list, and I'm starting to uh, put together you know meals per day, that sort of thing, try to get everything planned out. That's just the way I work. But my question is, because I, I've only heard, a, I've only been able to catch a little bit about the home and the, the, the environment. Like, what do I need to do to get this environment just completely devoid of all this stuff? Because, I mean, I've got three vehicles. Actually, I've got four vehicles and three homes. And I, I, it's everywhere. I mean, as soon as I pick something up, I can tell that it's on there because I can feel the stinging in my skin. And I, I look closer... And, you know, you can see the, these fibers that are left behind. They break like crystals. They, I've, I've watched them grow out of my fingers like crystals. Um, well, to, to, answer, to answer your question, you have uh, all those automobiles and homes. I think the most efficient way, efficient way, efficient way of doing it is with the electrostatic sprayer. Uh, use the uh, enzymes only by themselves that should handle any anything and everything, and it takes a lot less time to disinfect. I mean, uh, you can disinfect your automobile uh, in a few in a, a few seconds. With automobiles, you need to be aware of the cabin filter, usually located around the uh, glove box, and well, have that well, changed. Right. What's that? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, yep. I'm, I'm, I was just saying I know where, the, where those filters are located. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So you want to replace them, and then uh, and and then 
spray, spray, spray. I mean, because you're infested, I wouldn't just spray once a day. I'd spray several times a day. Uh, it's almost going to be a full-time job to handle all that space that you have. Yes, and I travel constantly. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, it's an electrostatic sprayer. And, 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 right, oh. and, and clean them up, Zimes. Okay, thank you, clean them. Anthony. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Keep coming back. And who's next, Chris? Maggie. And thank you again for this forum. It's, I've been on this journey now, on your journey now, for nearly a month. I do see some improvements. Um, and so one of my questions, and I know I've been told it doesn't really matter, but one of the things I'm experiencing the most, particularly after I take a bath and shower, is the white lint. It just it gets in my clothes, inside, and they do seem to sting. So do we know? Are they live organisms? Because I don't know now what I'm battling. Well, the, the white lint, the white lint uh, you know, my opinion is a collection of tiny filaments that are probably microscopic in size. And according to Dr. Saverly, author of Morgellons, the legit, legitimization of a disease, it is Morgellons disease, uh, an indication of Morgellons. And the key, number one, is to make the diet work because until you make the diet work, you are walking, talking, breathing machine, shedding them and, and uh, uh, shedding them everywhere all the time. Yeah. So, again, I can't be near my family or friends because I'm assuming that I am contagious, so I'm still isolated after over a year. But these white things just started when I moved back to Ohio a month and a half ago. I didn't have them when I lived in Seattle. So I don't know if maybe I developed more gallons a little later because I had bird mites initially and possibly rat mites from my neighbor. But a horrible infestation in my home. Now I'm here, and I don't know if I have mites in my new place or not. I kind of think I may. I'm using the clean em up enzymes daily. Thankfully... My cat's not vomiting anymore. He was initially when I was using it. But um, I don't know if it's handling them. I, I still feel the stinging in the evening, particularly when the sun goes down. And I'm very strict with the diet. I've been playing with it, eliminating. I eliminated eggs for a few days. See if that was the problem. <clears throat> but I'm still getting some bites. The old ones are... Well, can you tell if it's environmental or if it has to do with something that you ate? I can't tell. I don't know because when you have all of them co coinciding, it's hard to tell. It's well, when you when you eat, the idea is to exactly the time that you eat, write down everything that you ate, yes. and then set a timer and in 20 minutes see if you have any activity. Uh, if you notice the activity within that 20 minutes, it's probably connected to what you ate. If uh, if you sit down someplace and you haven't had anything to eat for uh, hours, perhaps, and you feel activity, then it's probably in what you're sitting, and that needs to be disinfected. It took me it took me three months to figure out how to get them out of my couch, and that was because I didn't have an electrostatic sprayer at the time. I didn't even know about them, and they were hiding in the tufts of the ends of my uh, maybe you call it the uh, uh, footrest. Uh, uh, I was spraying and spraying the top of the footrest and the bottom of the footrest, but never thought to spray the ends, and that's where yeah. they were. And I learned all of that this past year dealing with mites that infested my home. I'm very stringent about the cleaning part. However, it was a massive invasion. And then trying to get away from them, I discovered that I have them in or on my body because they just followed me. They've, but I, I can't tell if I have mites here or not. I didn't. So did, have you done the natiparam? I've ordered it. And it has. It's taken over a week to get here. It's not here yet. Okay. Well, you should you should be getting it momentarily. Then probably tomorrow you'll get it. But long story short, I just the biggest thing I'm noticing are these the white lint, and they feel like they sting because they gather on the inside of my clothes after I bathe. And I put on one through rollers and rolling off, and I thought, are these alive? What are these? Because 
they do feel like they sting. So what is there any, I guess there's no way to get rid of them except to keep rolling and hopefully that the diet and everything else I'm taking, all your, will finally get rid of them. You're ba- are you bathing? Yes. Two okay. Times. Okay, good. Yes. So so keep that up. If, when the diet is working, then uh, you're going to be stopped producing them and they're going to be diminished over time. So over a couple of weeks, you're going to find fewer and fewer of the uh, uh, lint balls or the lint things coming out. Because it's been three to four weeks since I started this process, and uh, I'm just, I, I just, you know, not knowing, and you have been experienced, it helps at least for me to know what I'm dealing with, because um, they do seem to sting, and they seem to be a, a, alive, and sometimes I'll feel them in my wounds. Can I They're like, oh, sure. Sure. Go ahead, Robin. Yeah. Um, so first of all, I pr- believe that the lint things that you're seeing are Morgellons, and oh. Morgellons build little environments for themselves to live in. They're microscopic, so you can't see them, but you can see the lint things, and that's why they move, because they're filled with parasites. And Ugh. if you, uh, and they're everywhere in your body and your stuff, in your house, in your environment, so here's the thing. It's not just the diet. When you walk into a room, you always start with the simplest solutions from the book. If you're going to go into any room or space in your house, spray with ammonia, hold your breath, leave for 10 minutes, and then go back in. When you leave, I can't the, use you ammonia. The same I just thing. can't. I can't then, use that. Okay, then. Cleaner, use the electrostatic That's, sprayer, but you got to do I, it every time you enter a room, wherever you're sitting, every time you leave the room. You need to do that. I do, and I spray the bottom of my shoes, I spray the seat I sit in. Well, and spraying your shoes isn't enough. You also have to wipe them down, put diatomaceous earth inside them, and store them in a Ziploc freezer bag. Yes, what I, which I do. All my shoes that I'm not wearing, but I mean, and I've got carpeting, unfortunately, like I've mentioned. So uh, I've loaded that up with diatomaceous earth. It's all in my cabinets. It's around the edges. It's everywhere. And then the areas that don't, I spray with the enzymes. I spray every morning, sometimes in the evening, and um, just hoping that the enzymes are working because so I spray- guess. Here's the thing. Okay, first of all, um, parasites become more active in the evenings. And yes, if you're spraying every morning and evening, then you're not spraying every time you walk in and out of a room. Then you need to be spraying well, more. The clean, enzymes but... seem to not, excuse me, the enzymes seem to not be working. Then change the ratio and make them stronger. I did, and then I had to back off a little because my cat started vomiting. And um, so, I mean, I'm... Well, it's, you'll that's... figure it out, but I mean... If that was too strong, yeah, you back off a little bit. But there's also disinfectants that you can use that won't affect the cat. And there's and one that I, says it's safe for cats, and he threw up after that. I have ordered um, hydrogen peroxide. It's um, how to forget. It's it's not compressed or something like that. They say it's safe around cats, so I have ordered that. And if and your cat they, on a diet and getting Lucenteron. Yes, Yes, I was feeding them basically what I was feeding, and then you just gave me the recommendations. So the dry food arrived yesterday, and I'm waiting on the – so I'm giving him tuna that's just in water, albacore tuna, and then the wet food is supposed to arrive tomorrow. But basically I was feeding him what I'm feeding, and that's just chicken and herbs. I mean, just plain chicken, once in a while ground beef. With herbs, yeah. um, a salad with onions and garlic and herbs and the um, the oil, the rice bran oil. That's all I eat. That's right. it. And so, uh, also, uh, I've talked about this before. Doing a flea dip with um, Adam's pyrethrin flea dip for dogs and cats, and it's really important to get your. It's it's the only thing that worked for my cat. 
Right. Um, <laughs> the uh, makes me nervous because it is highly toxic to cats. And then it's I not, also it's not. It's not highly toxic. They wouldn't say for dogs and cats. I call well, them, it is, and it's totally safe. I, if you read the label and follow the protocol on how to use it, you will be fine, and your cat will get better. It's going to be important for you to figure out where you're getting contaminated from, from the environment, or you're getting it back from the cat. Uh, you know, you're cross-contaminating each other. So that's going to be important for you to figure that out. Uh, all we can do is tell you the things that you need to do. So every time yeah. before you sit down someplace, you should spray it, as uh, Robin said. Uh, I always sprayed 10 minutes before I sat down, 10 minutes before I got in the car. I would spray after I got up and left the, a space. I use neem oil spray as well now, and I do that. And in my bed, and I spray it, and then end up having to roll it. Even after the laundry, then it's full of those white lint things, and I roll and roll and spray before I even get in the sheet. Um, well, I, again, again, the, these things are kind of... A diary is going to be important because somewhere along the way there's a mistake being made, there's contamination being made. Uh, it may be that you're not on, you not have not made the diet work, even though you've been on it. It's perhaps you haven't yet made it work. So there are a lot of con so you want you want to avail yourself to some uh, coaching with one of our coaches as well as well as we go along. Okay. Yes, and I appreciate that. I'm just, um, it's a lot to... I, it's a lot. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if we could come up with any more answers here today other than to um, maybe uh, point out some things that uh, perhaps you haven't been doing that you should be doing, such as 10 minutes before you occupy a space, spray it. When you leave, spray it. Uh, Cross-contamination with your cat. These things are, are all important. And we don't, you really don't know if uh, any of them is the answer or not and, until well, you investigate. Are, um, you know, I I, I, yesterday I was coaching somebody who said, you know, she's been doing the diet really well and, it, and she doesn't know why she's not getting better. And she's eating sugar-free bacon sandwiches every week with a spelt bread that has uh, yeast and sugar and uh, oil, no, no. you know, I mean, it's so easy yeah. to make mistakes. It's so no, I'm so. very careful. I'm very, very careful. Everyone's careful. So, but that, that's the story we hear from everybody. They think they're on the diet. They're very careful. And the only way to make sure is to keep a complete diary. And I offer this to I you for free. To keep a complete oh. diary for three days of everything you eat, the vitamins, everything and make a list and send it to me, and I'll be glad to look at it and see if you've made a mistake. Okay, because I know everything I'm li that you listed, onions, garlic, everything is clean, has no sugars or any additives in it, and that's kind of how I always ate anyway. <clears throat> right, uh, well, think well just, to be, just to be certain, it could be, who knows what it is, so uh, uh, just keep a diary for three days, and then we'll, we'll rule out the diet, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you.